Mr. Drew has been on our show a number of times. He teaches us about some of the not so cute and cuddly exotic animals he helps to rehabilitate and provide a home for. He travels the state visiting schools and parties. He also has a learning space in Lewiston where kids can feed or hold some of these remarkable creatures. Travel has slowed down quite a bit for Mr. Drew and his animals too. So I stopped by to learn about a few of his favorite bugs and check in on some of the tarantulas and scorpions that landed in his care this summer after they were seized from a Norway motel room. <gasps> we have, yeah. that's a, uh, <laughs> that is a uh, giant bird eating tarantula. That's a bird eating? That's what they call it. They very rarely eat birds, but on occasion I'm sure they get their babies. Now, this, if this is a baby? Well, this one's a young one. It's not a baby. Will they can get about get... the size of a dinner plate oh, with its legs. My word. And this one here is going to flick its hairs. See how it just threw its hairs? Those are called urticating hairs. And those will, it's like fiberglass insulation. They'll cause a rash. So it's a defense mechanism. And my tortoises are going. <laughs> it's a defense mechanism to protect them. Uh, those. Um, because those hairs would get into the eye of the animal, and the animal would be like all irritated. It could walk away. It didn't have to bite. Some of the, some tarantulas, a lot of tarantulas are ground spiders, and some are what they call arboreal, which means they'd rather be up high. So this one's hiding in there, but it's made its webs, and this would stay up like in a tree branch somewhere where it would feed on insects up high. So it's hiding in there. This is another arboreal species that's actually critically endangered. Um, and it's got that beautiful metallic blue. Are these poisonous to humans? Um, they're all spiders are venomous. The question is how strong the venom is. A lot of these are not. I mean, you get bit by them unless you're allergic to bees. It won't be an issue. Um, but you know, some of them, like the one I just showed you, that one can cause nerve nerve damage. So you know, it depends, and it depends on you, your constitution. Uh, but generally speaking, they're not aggressive species, some a little more than others, but a lot of these guys are just very mellow. It's like, just leave me alone, and they'll do the hair flicking and things like that. Does it take some time, once you get these animals here, does it take some time for them to sort of adjust to the idea of being handled? Or? Yeah, there's some animals here we won't let anybody hold, uh, or it's specific to me, only I hold. Uh, and I have to tell my volunteers that with some of them because it's like, oh, that one's pretty. It's like, that's, it's, not a, it's not a playful animal. We need to respect it. Uh, and then there's some that are so used to traveling with me and stuff that it's like, yeah, whatever. You know, they'll gladly go and they're, they're great with people and kids. And I can tell their body language when they're not in the mood to, enough to say, all right, we'll leave you home today. Um, but yeah, like these guys I haven't played a lot with because they just came in. So we're just adjusting and I'm playing. I take a few out, try them out. You know, and we uh, get them acquainted. Here we go. Aww. We'll put that away. And here we go. You know, so we have some fun things like the scorpions and. Where did that come from? Yeah, that was part of this, the. Uh, that was part of this. The, the collection that got taken. Yep. This is an emperor scorpion. It's the largest scorpion in the world, and again, it's got a stinger. If it stings me, it's like a bee sting. Nothing more. She stung me a few times, but now she's getting used to being handled. And we know because see how her tail's laying flat? She's calm. If I sit there and poke and tease her, that tail starts coming up as a defensive. Yeah. So that's back off. I'm getting ready. But other than that, when her tail goes flat, she's quite relaxed. It's the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Huh, okay. Yeah, and these guys make great pets. They're easy to care they, for. I'm sorry, they make great pets? Yeah, they do. <laughs> They really do. They can live up to seven years. They're easy to care for. Um, they don't breed readily unless you keep them very warm and humid. So Maine is not a good place for them. Um, unless you're, like I said, in here it's about 80, 84 degrees and that's year round. And you typically you'd find them in Madagascar? Is that yeah, yeah. Their job is to clean the island. These guys um, eat the leaves and stuff on the ground. They eat the rotting fruit. They make compost. They plant trees. So they're very, and they're a food source. So how the, did these guys end up in Maine? Oh, like all other exotics, someone imported them in and from there it just expanded, networked, and people started breeding them, so. And you could actually eat these guys. You, oh, okay, <laughs> I bet Caldwell would do that. <laughs> there are 30,000 species of cockroaches in the world and only 30 are harmful to humans. So that's less than 1% of all species of cockroaches that are harmful. The rest are 
harmless. And this one here is one of the harmless ones. It's actually a beneficial species. Although you would think twice if you saw that running across your floor. Well, not me, but. You wouldn't. <laughs> what did the kids really get excited about? Is there like a fact about them that oh, is super cool well, that kids are? Oh, well, I'm going to have to do this because you asked. No, go ahead, yeah. And um, it's this. <laughs> yeah, they like that when I do they that. They like that? Yeah, kids are always That's amazed because nice of the shock factor. Yeah, I was talking about eating them. Then and they then crawl out. out. <laughs> so, other than that. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> worth it. If you'd like to find out how you can support Mr. Drew and his animals, Chew, because those animals eat a lot, just head to the 207 section of our website or our mobile app. Would you eat one, Rob? Uh, I'm going to tell you, Amanda, that segment cried out for a little reporter involvement. <laughs> Not in the age of COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never. You know. Well, speaking of COVID, <laughs> never have you been more grateful for social distancing than you were as you were hanging out with Mr. Drew. Exactly. And exactly. I do have to say I'm impressed that you didn't bolt out of the building simply upon hearing the word tarantula the size of a dinner plate. There were so many. <laughs> So many in that room, and I maintained composure somehow. Well done. Well done.